Historically, the basic electrical instrument for measuring voltage, resistance, and current has been the VOM or volt -o milliammeter. Here's a typical inexpensive one. The meter draws power from the circuit under test. In some cases, this loading of the circuit affects its operation. The VTVM or vacuum tube voltmeter is an improvement over this design that uses vacuum tubes to provide a high input impedance, which reduces loading of the circuit under test. It also allows the meter to be more sensitive. Here's a book from 1941 by John Ryder about VTVMs. Ryder's credited with designing one of the first commercial units. VTVMs have been on the market from the 1920s through the 1970s using the same basic design. This unit is the Heathkit IM18. Like most Heathkits, it was sold as a kit. It came on the market in 1968 and was produced until 1976. It was the successor to the IM-11 that came on the market in 1961, that in turn was the successor of the V-7 and the V-7A. There are only minor differences between the IM-11 and the IM-18, mostly a new look and differences in color. In 1977, the IM-18 was replaced by the IM-5218 and was produced until 1983. Again, it was only a new look and color. The VTVM V1 was one of the first Heath kits coming on the market in 1947, just after the oscilloscope O1. The circuitry is very similar in all the models. This VTVM can measure AC and DC voltage and resistance in seven ranges. It features a large 4.5 inch analog meter. It runs from the AC line, although it uses an internal battery for the resistance function. There's a probe which must be switched between DC and AC ohm settings. A 1 mega ohm resistor is switched into the circuit for DC voltage measurements and shorted out for AC and resistance measurements. Let's take a look at the meter operating in each of its modes, starting with DC voltage. I've turned on the meter and let it warm up for a few minutes. Because it's vacuum tube based, it's necessary to let it warm up for a period of time and stabilize. There's also a zero adjust control that needs to be adjusted periodically as the meter drifts over time. For measuring a DC voltage, I'm going to use a DC reference circuit that I've built. It's a very simple design with a single voltage reference chip and a 9 volt battery. and produces a very accurate 5 volt reference. I found it used for, for calibrating BTMs and digital multimeters. So we set it on the DC plus range and as good practice for any kind of non-auto ranging meter as this, it's good to start on the highest range when you're measuring a voltage that may be unknown. Look up the voltage reference. Now I'm on the 1500 volt range, so let's go down until we get a reasonable reading somewhere around mid or upper point of the scale. Now the 5 volt range is actually ideal here. I have a 5 volt reference and a range that goes up to 5 volts and we see we have something indicating very close to exactly 5 volts on the meter. A nice feature of this meter is being able to switch the polarity between plus and minus using the front panel switch. So if you're measuring a voltage of different polarities you can simply switch the mode rather than moving the test leads around. Now for measuring AC voltage, the process is similar. You do ever have to remember to switch the probe to the AC ohms position. The final mode that it can operate in is resistance. So to do that we select ohms and it's necessary typically to adjust the ohms adjustment knob so that we have a full scale or infinite reading for an open circuit such as this. Again, making sure that we've set this to the ohms position and not DC. Good check of that is to short the leads together and we should see a reading very close to zero. So I'm now going to connect a resistor to the leads to measure its resistance. And I've previously selected a reasonable range here to give me about mid-scale reading. We're seeing a reading of just about 13, and this is on the R times 100, 
scale. So that would be a value of 1300 ohms or 1.3 K and that's in fact the value that this resistor is marked with 1300 ohms. Let's take a look at the insides. So making sure that it's unplugged. I've removed the two screws from the back. We can see inside the circuitry that uses a printed circuit board. We can see the rotary switches for the ranges and mode. Uh, it uses 1% resistors throughout most of the circuitry. Power transformer, two vacuum tubes, and the C battery that's used for the ohms function. There's one adjustment inside that could be used for calibrating it. In fact, it can be calibrated by using a built-in voltage reference. It doesn't require any external test equipment. I bought this unit on eBay mostly for nostalgia reasons. In my teens, I was given an IM13, a similar but slightly larger bench model. I used it for my early forays into electronics and radio. By the 1970s, VTVMs were being replaced by solid-state field-effect transistor meters and then digital multimeters or DMMs. Here's a modern, inexpensive DMM which can measure voltage, current, resistance, capacitance, frequency, and temperature. And here's a 1980s vintage Heathkit DMM that I picked up at a garage sale. What are the pros and cons of VTVMs like this one? On the plus side, an analog meter is much easier to read than a digital display when adjusting a circuit for a peak or null or to see the trend for a slowly moving voltage. For this reason, some of the more expensive DMMs have an additional analog bar graph display. The meter has an 11 megohm input impedance higher than some modern DMMs. It can measure quite high resistances with ranges up to R times 1 meg. Because it's a Heathkit, if it fails, you can probably repair and calibrate it yourself because of the availability of manual and parts. On the minus side, as compared to a modern DMM, it's quite large, heavy, and fragile. It requires AC power so it's not portable. It's not floating with respect to ground, so it cannot directly make measurements unless the device under test is floating or one side is grounded. This is a particular danger when working on old transformerless AC-DC radios. The chassis on these radios is often connected to one side of the AC line. Connecting the DMM ground lead to such a radio can short the AC line directly to ground, blowing a fuse and possibly damaging the radio, meter, or operator. The meter is not very accurate. The accuracy is plus or minus 3% of full scale for DC and plus or minus 5% for AC. It's quite hard and slow to read. Where most modern DMMs are auto-raging, it requires manually changing ranges. It also requires several minutes of warm-up period and continuous adjustment of the zero and ohms adjustment settings. It also has very limited functions. It can't measure capacitance or even current. The switch in the test lead is easy to forget to set correctly and often breaks. In fact, the test leads are often missing in used models that come up for sale. So in summary, while not commonly used for working on modern electronics, the Heathkit IM18 VTVM is a classic piece of test equipment. Many thousands of them were sold and used for years by hobbyists and repairmen and many are still in operating condition and used occasionally like this one.